Hello. Hi, Jillian. Hey, how are you? I'm good, and you? Hi. I'm doing good. Oh, okay. yeah. All right, welcome everyone. Oh no, I can hear myself. Give me one second. All right. So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. So welcome to the Strollo New University. Strollo New was created at the start of the COVID pandemic as a way to offer both physical and mental activities and classes to help benefit the cystic fibrosis community throughout the difficult months while society isolated at home. The CFLF expanded this program with a new spring and fall semester this year, adding brand new classes and incorporating more educational and informative classes to the mix. The CFLF would like to thank all the individual supporters and the Strollo U instructors for their participation in making Strollo University a positive resource and experience for people with CF. We hope you enjoyed today's class and please keep checking the CFLF website for more classes. We update the schedule every two weeks. So it would be at cflf.org slash strollo dash you. Okay, and just keep checking back. And also I would like to thank our sponsors. I would like to thank our sponsors, Kiesi, Viatris, Nestle Health Science, Translate Bio, and Kruger Health. Because of you guys, we are able to have this program. We would like to thank you. And I would also like to thank our uh, instructor for today, Ms. Jennifer McDaniel. She will be painting, helping us paint today. So I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, thank you, Tiffany. Today we're going to be painting um, a post-impressionist um, painting by the artist Vincent Van Gogh. His painting is called The Irises. It's one of his um, many flower paintings. This one he painted in 1890. And Remarkably, it was um, after he um, went into a mental institution. He had a very difficult life. But his uh, work is amazing and remarkable. So we'll be painting it because during this series, we was going with historical art movements and paintings. If you was with us last time, we painted um, a still life that was based on a, um, another painter. And now we'll be painting a flower painting based on a very famous artist. So what you will need today is five colors. That is black, white, red, yellow, and blue. This is known as um, your primary colors plus black and white. So your paint palette should look something like this. We're organizing from the lighter colors to the darker ones. So white should be like all the way on the side. Then you have yellow, red, blue, and then I put black at the end. And make sure to like leave a little space so you have room to mix your colors. Because we'll be making colors like green, peach, purple, violets, lighter blues, darker blues. We'll be doing that by mixing these colors together. Now I'm going to show you how. Now, if your paint is a, um, my paint is a very thick paint, 
so it could um hold itself with me tilting my palette over. But if yours is like more wet, just make sure to add a little more space in between it. And so the painting is going to be looking like this in the end. Like the background is very faded. You're going to see mostly blue, blues, and greens, and less of red. So once you have your palette together, I'm going to begin to show you how we begin on our canvas. So if you have a um, like a traditional canvas that has the texture and everything, before we add any paint or color to it, we're just going to dampen it by taking our large brush, something that's like this or um, equal to this, we're going to put it into, in, into the water and we're just going to wet the surface. So you want to do just nice even strokes. You just want it to be wet. It shouldn't be like um, dripping or anything, but just enough that you'll see a glisten on the canvas. Now, once you do that, you start seeing like the water being absorbed by the canvas. You're, you'll be ready to paint. And now painting isn't difficult if you know the right steps. And I'm going to show you the easy way to paint so that anyone can paint. I know that this could be like intimidating for people. You know, they think like, oh, you have to be like a professional artist or something. But anyone could paint. So now I have my canvas wet. And what we're going to do, we're going to divide the space on our canvas to make it easier to visualize where we're going to place the flowers, the vase in this picture frame. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to make a line on the, bo on the bottom of the canvas to represent the table that this vase is going to be sitting on. And I'm going to do that in black. So I'm going to first take a smaller brush. It's kind of like this. And see, it has like a round pointed edge. This is the like the right tool that you want to use to make a line. Now, if you don't have a rounded brush, you can use a square brush like this but you're going to lean it on the side. Like instead of just going straight on, you're going to just lean it on the side and try to make the straight line that way. So I'm going to go into my black. I'm going to put a little water on it. So I'm taking my brush, this is my palette. I'm taking my brush and going into the black a little bit. I'm just making sure that the paint covers like the tip of the brush like this. I'm gonna, but I want to make sure that it will like kind of like run like ink. So you don't want it like super thick. You just want it to, it to be able to move. And I'm going to measure it like maybe like Like maybe like the size of like my finger going from here to here. And I'm going to make a line going across the bottom.
Now this is going to be in the background and we're going to like, you know, once we start adding our layers, you'll start to see it come together. And now I'm going to go a little bit in the center. So this is my line. This is going to be the table. This is the background. Now we're going to put a vase somewhere on this table. So going towards the center, I'm just going to mark a little line that's like maybe like a half an inch before the very bottom of the canvas. This is just so that we can visualize where we're going to put the vase. Now that I have that line, I'm going to visualize like how big is this vase going to be compared to like the flowers. Now the vase is going to be small. So I'm looking at my canvas and I'm thinking that the size of my hand should be the size of the vase. So like making kind of like you're holding a cup and you're just like, okay, so this is going to be the size of the vase. And you're just gonna like, you know, just imagine and then you're going to imagine like your hand being the vase and like placing it on it. And like wherever you see your hand being, it's like, okay, so th that's how high it's going to be. So now we have, we should have two lines, no, well, three. The first line that we made where the table hits the wall. The second line the very bottom of the base and the third one, the top of the base. Now I'm going to take the same color and we're going to make a U shape. And we're just kind of going to like connect those two. A U on the left and the U on the right. Now we got the base. And that's um, probably like making the base is probably going to be like the hardest part of that painting because everything else is kind of going to be free form. It's like wherever you want to put the flowers. So We know that like we we want to make sure that we fill this. We want to make sure that we fill this upper space with like the flowers, and we want to make sure that we put in like a couple of lines. But we're going to just go light. So did we just kind of just mark like where the flowers are going, like you know where the flowers are going to be going? So we know it's going to be like here, here, like you know how the leaves are going to spread out from this vase. And now that we marked our beginnings, we're going to begin to block in color. So what that means is we're going to, we're going to start filling in the blank spaces. We're going to do the bottom first, and the bottom is a green. So I'm going to clean my brush, and first I want to show you how we make green. We're going to take yellow and blue, and we're going to mix them together. So first, I'm going to take a clean brush. I'm going to dip it in the water just so that like the paint will move better. I'm going to first go into my yellow. I'm going to take just a, just a little bit, like not too much. I'm gonna go put it on my palette like so. And then I'm gonna go into my blue. And I'm just going to add like a like a little bit at a time. 
just so that we get to like a nice steam. And so we're going to mix the blue and the green together, the blue and the yellow, sorry. A very nice green. And now since this green is kind of dark and we kind of want a lighter green, what we're going to do, this is my green so far, is a very pretty green. What I'm going to do to lighten it is I'm going to add some white to it. So I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to start from like the corner of the white. Take some white. I'm going to put it. I'm not going to just put it directly into the green I made. I'm going to put it beside it. And then I'm going to mix into it. Taking a little bit of white at a time and mixing it into the green until we eventually get a lighter color, like so. Now, this is a good color. This is the color that we're going to start with. And now I'm just going to make sure that my, you know, my brush is clean. I'm going to make, and then I'm going to add this color onto the brush. So you want to make sure that you put it on both sides of the brush, that color that we just made. Now I'm going to just dip my brush into the water really quickly, just so to make sure that it's nice and wet. And then we're going to put this color on this, on this area, but we're not going to touch the base, the base that we made. So we're starting going around, kind of making like a horseshoe motion. And then I'm going to fill it in. Now, if you notice that like um, the paint is being a little streaky, add some water to it and just keep going. And now you just fill in that bottom area and you just go back into your green, just fill in that space. Now, it's okay if we go over the lines that we made. That's fine. Because that's just like the outline anyway. And now we're just going to fill in that color. Now, when you're filling in the color, you might want to use a slightly bigger brush than the, the ones that we've been using, just so that like it'll um, fill up quicker. But if you want to see more brush strokes, use a smaller brush. So you get like all those strokes and everything. That kind of what that's the brush strokes is kind of what makes the starry night starry night because you see all of his brush strokes. You see his like the movement of his brush, like how he put it on. So either way, a larger or smaller. And so it's kind of looking like this so far. It's nice. And once that first layer dries, we can add more colors and like different ver um, variations of this green to kind of really give it that um that van gogh look so just making sure that like you know you get the top to the bottom you don't leave any white spaces you want to make sure that you completely fill out that area So you completely fill out this area with color. And that's the that's the bottom. And how now, did you get that color again? I'm sorry. So first you mix yellow and blue. You put more yellow down. We're good with zoom. I just all right, bye. <laughs> so you 
So what you first you're going to do is that you're going to put down um, yellow. And then you're going to take a tiny amount of blue and you're going to like mix it into each other, like a piece at a time. Kind of like if you was like um, using a mixer and you was um, putting eggs into your batter, you don't put them all at once, you put it like a little at a time. That's how you're going to do your blue into the yellow. And you're going to get like a really nice dark green. Thank you. And then once you get that dark green, you're going to add white to it until it becomes like this. And that's how you get this color. So you make the green first with blue and yellow. And then once you get that green, you add white to it. And what we're doing today is we're making our own rendition of Van Gogh's painting, The Irises. And so, for those of you who are ready, we're going to paint the background of the larger space of our canvas. Now, from the painting that we see today, due to fading of the colors, the background appears to be white, but it was actually red. Back in the day before they had like, you know, products like this, where like the paints are pre-made in the thick, um, in a container, people had to make their own paints. So Van Gogh, he made, the background was originally red, but he didn't use good pigments. So over time, the red faded. So now the background of the painting looks to be like almost like a peachy white. But you can see with the rest of his paintings, like the colors are very bright and vibrant. So what we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to paint it not in the original color, but we're going to paint it as we see it today. So we're going to mimic that fade in the color by mixing like a um, like a, a red like a red orangey bright color, and then we're going to add white to it. So kind of like the same thing that we did with the first part background, we're going to, we're going to do with the other. So to begin that, we're going to take red. Like about this much. And then I'm going to take a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to mix the two. Yellow into the red. And we just want like, um, we still want the color red, but we just want it slightly, just like slightly on the orange side, just like not too much, but it's like, you know, you, you could tell that a little bit of yellow is in that red. So this is the color. Let me make sure that I think it's right. This is that color, that orange red right there. And now I'm just going to clean my brush before I go into the white. And 
and then I'm going to take like a large amount of like like that much. It's like almost like the size of your pinky, like the very tip of your pinky. And I'm going to put the white next to the red, to this orange that we made. I'm not gonna put it directly on top of it. We're just gonna put it side by side. So that's my white and that's my orange. And now I'm going to mix the two into each other, but not all at once, just a little bit at a time. And I wanna make sure that the white is kind of like dominating the red. And as you're mixing, you wanna flip your brush over. So whatever color that you got on one side, you get it to the other. So you can barely tell that, the, that there's color, but it should be a very, very light pink that we need. Like almost like the color of your hand, but a little more pink. And this is that color. Now we're going to put this in the area, but I want to show you how. I'm just going over the lines that we made. I'm gonna go make like a little, like a little boot, like it's a sun. And then we're gonna color the rest. And the whole thing with um posters. Jennifer, can I see yours again? I'm trying to get that color. Is that like a peach? Yes. Pe so okay. what, you, what you do is that you take red and you take only a small amount of yellow and you mix it into each other. And it should be like a, um, let me show you this color. Um, this color right here, if you can see it beyond the black, this color. And once you mix that, you're going to add white, but you want to make sure that the white, like, um, that it, um, pretty much overtakes it and makes it looks almost like your skin, like the, um, the inside of your hand. And we're just gonna take that color. I'm gonna paint that all over. Now, what makes an impressionist painting is when we like take like a like a tiny bit of red and we, like we show our brush strokes. When you can see the brush strokes on the painting, that's like kind of like what gives it that impressionist and post impression feel. It's like okay, you can see like the process. You can see 
like what kind of brush that he was using, the person is using. You could see like, you know, how much color they put on. You could see like which direction they were going. And that's just kind of what you want to do, kind of mimic that a bit. Okay, let me see where my brush strokes are going. And it's okay to see a little bit of streak marks. That's kind of like what you want to see in this type of style of painting. Yeah. If you ever find your paints drying on you a little bit, just add a little bit of water to it. It will bring it right back. And you really just want to have fun with it. Because like you want to, you, want to, you know, you want to see the work, you want to see the effort, and you want to, you know, enjoy it. Like you should be having fun, it should be relaxing, and it should be therapeutic. That's why like a lot of people do art. Like it gives them a chance to rest, to think, to let their mind just be at ease. Now with this, I went into the red and I'm just um, making the marks in it because the painting is what you make of it. So I'm just adding like a little spot to red and I'm just like letting my brush, you know, show. And then I'm going to go back into the white and just kind of go a little bit on top of it, kind of making this effect. And you can just go back into the colors that you use to make this peak. Like, you know, go into your yellow, put a little bit of yellow on, then go back into your white to like, you know, mute it a little bit. Like I did in this corner, I went into the yellow, then I put a little white back into it. And I'm also, I'm keeping my brush, my brush as is. I'm not cleaning it or anything. So I'm just going into the white, going into the red, like letting those colors mix on the brush. I'm going like back and forth. And um, right now I'm kind of just going in one direction only. So I started going like branching out like in a radius. And then we're just going from left to right. I'm adding like these accents. So it kind of like rounds the painting a bit. All right, now I'm going to add a little bit more white to bring the colors back down, make it mute a little bit, make it quiet. If it's getting a little loud, put a little white on it. You know, that's how you quiet down your colors. Anytime you find your colors being too loud, too rowdy, just put a little white on it. Tell it go. Shh. Mm -hmm. 
Trishing my colors. It's like, okay, all right, all right. We get it. We see you. <laughs> it's good, you, got, you just got to quiet it down a little bit because, like, hey, it's the background. So, I just want to make sure that you guys are on the same page. So, this is how my background is looking. It's pretty. And that's just going in, like, you know, just working it. You know, because we need this peach color using red, yellow, and white. Once we get the peach color on, we can take the picture of red, yellow, and white, and that's how we get the accents by like adding it in. It's like you're showing the color that you made and the color that you made the color. Oh, okay. And you can do the same thing with the bottle. Mm -hmm. Like, you can do the you just take a little bit of this, but you can take that shadow. Hi, Jen. You're um, breaking up a little bit. Um, Sheila, can you mute yours and maybe I'll hear her better? Hmm? Breaking up? You use blue, yellow, and white. And you kind of just do the same thing that we did to the top on the bottom. And you just add just a little bit of blue and a little bit of um, yellow, mix that white in, kind of show like the, the highlights of the table. And you got to do that with a brush. So I'll give you a demonstration. So I'm going to take some of my blue. Just going to. I'm going to go around, make a little streak here. I'm going to go into my white. Go into my yellow. Just kind of like, you know, make it light. Like it doesn't have to be the exact same color. But you see, you're starting to get the streaks and that brush stroke effect. And you can maybe just like a little more white and just like have the white show kind of like that. Should it drop should the brush be dry or should it be wet? Um when you're doing this, it should be dry. But if the paint gets like a little bit too difficult to put on, just add a little water to it. Like just a little bit, just enough to get the color on. Like you shouldn't be doing the workout trying to get the paint onto the canvas. But it shouldn't be too loose that it's just like, you know, spreading like butter. It should be like a little tough. And remember, you can't make a mistake. You're an artist. Artists don't make mistakes. That's what my mom always told me. Here we go. See, now it's like, whoo, look at that. Oh. That's a whole new painting. And that's just like, that's just come from experimenting. Like, you just like, okay, I want to add a little more white. And he's like, huh, I think I added a little bit too much white. You add a little bit of yellow and blue. And you're like, oh, okay, I like it now. And you just keep going back and forth. You're playing with it. You're having fun. You're just like figuring it out. You're just like, oh, I like this. I like this. I like that. 
hmm, I don't like this, so let me change it. And that's what you do. If you don't like it, change it. So we got the top and we got the bottom. And now for the fun part. So I'm just going to take any mix of blue and yellow. It could be dark, it could be light. Right now I got this kind of dark green. Now I'm going to just make a line. Kind of like that. And I'm just going to make another line. And we're going to make a couple of these lines. And we're going to use different shades of green. So I'm going to use my dark green first. If it's still getting a little dry, a little water. And like you could just curve it as a plant would, like, you know, it ain't got to be like perfectly straight, like, you know, a couple of curved lines. Kind of going about, going around about. And you know, I'm just going to make a couple of these. Like, you know, you guys seen flower pots, like, you know, you know how it'd be, like, you know, you get like a million things sticking out at you. Yeah, be careful no one stick you in the eye. And just like, okay, yeah, that's what you do. And then you can make a lighter green. Like, you know, we can make a more yellow, like a yellow green. So we're gonna just take that color we got, we're gonna add yellow to it. And if you start like, you know, just make a make a nice. You know, kind of a summery green. This is my summery green. And it doesn't matter like how light or dark it is. It's whatever green you make. And I'm just going to, like, you know, kind of follow it too. I'm just going to take it, make some light spots. I'm going to add my volume on just. And you just like on the text. Like, you know, I'm just following that green that we originally made. And just like going along the edge, showing like that light green show. I'm going to take a little white. I'm going to add that to that green. Make a line, make a couple of lines going through this. Like you're just adding at random parts of your of the colors that you made and just making it work. Cause like right now you're just gonna let that creative that create um, creativity just go, and you're just using like whatever green that you make. If you make a lighter green, a darker green, that's all right. Just let it go. Just let it, just let it be alive. You wanna add like a darker blue? Make a make a darker green. Go right ahead. And the whole thing is like the more different versions of green you got is what makes the painting. Oh, 
And let's say like you want to go back to your lighter color, but you like the dark color that you have on your brush, get a new brush. And like I want to get a new brush right now. I'm going to use this for my light green. And I'm just going to have my other one for the darker one. And the whole thing is like you just want to fill in the white spaces. So you don't want like any any of those spaces shown. So and you can mix like this like blue and white and have like a very light, a very light blue. And just like, you know, you got a little streaks of that. Cause that what adds the contrast. That's what makes it pop. And you, when you look at these paintings, it's like they experimented with color. That's what this period in art history is about. Experimenting with color. Because like before everybody was just painting like, you know, everything the exact way that it appeared in nature. And like everything was like, you know, about realism. But this painting style is about color contrast, color mixing. And that's what Van Gogh was about. He was about exploring color. Like what happens when I mix two colors that are like opposites to each other and I like, you know, I put them together and like that's the kind of thing you want to do. So and we need to get to the flowers. <laughs> this is just the greenery. <laughs> and that's the whole thing. You're having fun with it. I can add like a little more yellow. I'm just gonna add a little more yellow to mine. I'm gonna add a little more yellow and more white and make sure that green is like wow. I want that green to say like, hey, what's up? And I'm just like, hey, what's up? And make it a little dark on the corner. Um, okay, so now I'm going to work on the vase so we can let the top, or, the top part dry a bit before we add the flowers on it. And that's just mainly just going to be like circles and stuff. So it's like basic shapes is what make like um, the things that we experience in reality. What's a flower other than like a couple of like tiny circles, ovals, triangles, or the different shapes together in harmony with each other. When people think about painting, they're just like, oh, that's so difficult. It's like you, you, you focus on the bigger thing and not breaking it down to the simplest form. It's like when you do math, like you have like a very complex equation that you gotta work on. And the first thing they tell you is like, hey, break it down, simplify it, simplify the equation, artisan equation. You see that flower that you want to paint, break it down. Break it down to lines, shapes, basic forms that you can work with. And when you get them together and you put them together in the right way, the end result is the flower. That's how it starts. These basic lines, circles, curves. So I'm going to take my white. I'm going to take um, a clean brush, like you know, if you uh, wash it a bit. I'm going to take my white, and I'm just going to go over that area. We're going to try to make sure that we don't see a line or anything. So I'm just going to go over, remake that shape as a vase. So 
So pillow pockets. You see, you kind of can't see the line. That's what you want. And as that paint is like still wet, I'm going to take like my smaller brush. I'm going to go like a little bit into like, I think we're going to go into the blue right here. Let me just check. Because as the painting on my phone, I just want to make sure that I'm like slightly accurate, even though it's my own version. Yeah, I think I'm going to go into like, I'm going to go into the blue, just a tiny bit. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create shadow. And you're just going to make like a C shape. Starts as a C, and you just go into it. Gonna add a little more white just to make the color blend out a little more. But you generally just start with a C, and you just blend it out, and like, oh look, it has depth now. Like you know, it's now it's like it's not just a flat object. It's like oh yeah, that's a base. I'm gonna add a little bit of. The whole thing like this white. If you take blue and then you add a little red to it, it kind of makes it like a like a nice um dark spot. So like when you see like a shadow, you see like maybe like the lighter part of the shadow before you see like the darker part. So you're kind of like doing that when you add the red into the blue. It's like, okay, you have the lighter shadow, which is just the blue, but then when you add the red to it, it makes the darker part. And it kind of makes like a black color without ever you using black. And this is what they um, try to um, teach you in art school. It's like, you know, make the make that shadow color without using black, and then you'll get a more realistic shadow. I'm just going back and forth. I'm going to show you in a second what I'm doing. And that's with just the blue, the red, and white. And you just, like you're letting the colors mix and you're just like, hey, it's making that weird kind of gray color. And you're saying, yes, I want that weird kind of gray color that is making. And what you do is to bring it back in control, you add white. So you want to make sure that your center part is white. So what you do is like once you got the colors down, you take a clean brush, get your white, and you add that white in. It's like, okay, I want this bottom part to show that shine that you see in like your vases and your cups and stuff when the light hits it on the curve. So you show that light, you put that white back into it, you let that brush work into the colors that you just put down. So like, you know, it fades a little bit into the darker color. And then that's how you get that effect. It's like, oh, wow, I did it. And it's just like, hey, <laughs> I'm an artist. <laughs>
And you see, these are, they take it simple. It doesn't take a lot of um, work. It just takes patience. Take patience to go back in and be like, okay, I want to work this area a little more. I want to work this area a little more. Boom. Now that we did the base, our top part is dry enough that we could do the final part of the painting. And guess what? You just painted something. This is good enough on its own, but we want to put some flowers on it. This is awesome, Jennifer. So now what we're going to do is like now that that top part has dried a bit, we're going to clean our brushes. We got to make sure that it's clean. So when we add these colors, it's going to be like, we don't want it to get all like, you know, muddy. You want the colors to be clean. So if you have any clean brushes left, get them out. If your brushes are dirty, just give it a quick you know, rinse. Make sure that it's nice and clean. Because now we're getting to the final stretch of this painting. And trust me, it's going to be epic. We're going to take white. Nice big blob of white. We're going to make sure we cover both sides of the brush. And the flowers go wherever you see fit. So I'm going to put a couple, I'm going to put like maybe like, I'm going to put like a couple on the edge and I'm going to mark it with my white. So I'm taking my white paint and I'm marking the area where I'm going to put my flowers. So when I add the color, it won't like, you know, uh, be affected by the green that's already there or any of the background colors. So I'm just, and you're just dabbing it. You're just dabbing it. You're just dabbing color. We don't want it too thick, but we just want to dab it, just dab it on. It's okay if you overlap a little bit. It's okay if it's not like where you put any of your green stems on. Hey, flowers just be like that. Flowers are unique. You just want to, you know, just put your flowers wherever. But you also want to put it like in the middle of it. Maybe you want to cover your vase a little bit. Like, you know, kind of like that. And that's all right because the flowers are the main thing of the show. And so this is what I got. And I'll just go ahead, refine it. So let me do like that. Clean it out. Put a couple on. Spread it out. You know, you know how you like your flowers to look, you know, when you mother's day up, like you know, your kids are gonna get you flowers, they're gonna be like. You want, a, you want a nice bouquet of flowers. You want it to be pretty. So like, you know, you, you know how many flowers you're gonna want. You're gonna be like, you know what? Mm, I want more flowers. <laughs> yep. Like, you know, I love flowers. Mm -hmm. So now I think I'm going to this. Wow, that's so pretty. That's nice. Or I'm going to take my small brush, all that paint still wet. I'm going to, um, I think we're going to make a couple of blue flowers. I'm going to take my wet paint, I'm going to just. What color is that? I'm using blue, but you can honestly use any color you want because it's your flowers. Happy Mother's Day. You can use yellow. You can use red. I'm using blue.
I'm just going in. I'm going straight into the blue and I'm just like just spreading it out, just spreading it. Going like, and I'm letting it mix with that white while it's just still wet and then just going, just dapping it on. He holds it up a little. Oh. Mm -hmm. So while your white is still wet on the canvas, just dap your blue around it. Like when I try to mix perfectly, we want like the dark streaks to show. We're just going like tap, 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 tap. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're just going around, going in. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. And the whole thing is like the lighter you tap, the more that color mixes with the white that's already there. You don't want to go too heavy. You want that color, you want those colors to mix and show and like, you want to see that beauty. You'd be like, oh, wow, I did that. Yeah. And what I do, is I start around the corner of my white area and then I work my brush in. So you get the darker color first. And then as you go in, you get the lighter color. So start around the sides. Get the darker, get the lighter. And look at that. Look. Look how that transformed. So it's just basic, just basic instructions. Just yeah. really simple. Like boom. Next thing you know, it's like, wow, look at that. We got a whole painting. Then people be like, hey, who made that? You could say, I made that. I'm an artist. Now, um, I'm going to go back in. I'm going to take my white and I'm going to add like the, some of those lighter parts that are in the, that are in flowers. You know, like when you see the bright little yellow spot, I'm just going to add a couple of these. I'm going to add back some of that white. And I'll read that lighter part back and I'm just going to be real gentle, just gentle. I'm just being gentle. You know, I'm just working out some areas that, you know, it's like, okay, see the flower here, flower here. And like, you know, we start, like, you know, we go from abstract and we define it a little bit. Okay, this is abstract. Now I'm going to define a little bit. This one, okay, so I see that's a that's a petal that's folding this way. I see a petal folding that way, and we're just adding, we're just doing that with just making like very tiny little marks, like nothing crazy, just a tiny little bit of mark here. The next thing you know, it's like wow, that's a whole team. And then a person can look at it and anybody can tell like, yeah, that's a fire beam. Like even if a person that didn't speak your language could look at your painting and say, yeah, that's a flower beam. You know, you did a good job. Because art transcends language.
så vi løsner pinden. Excuse me. If you made it up to this point, good job, everybody. You should be proud of yourself. You made an amazing painting today. You did it by yourself. With a little bit of direction, yours truly. But you look at your canvas, like, you know, just like set it aside a little bit, like, you know, back up, look at it, be like, yep, I like what I see. Excellent job, Jennifer. Sorry, I was on the camera and concentrated. Yeah, great. Can I wash my hands? Sure, sure. Let's see everybody's painting. Right, no everyone, let's see what you got. It's <laughs> my daughter. <laughs> Let me see if I can put it in gallery view. Everyone hold it up. Oh, okay, wait. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Love it. Good job. Good job. Ooh, I like that purple. It's pretty. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jenny, for this experience. This was a great class. Um, I would like to give another shout out to our sponsors, Kiazi, Viatris, Nestle Health Science, Translate Bio, and Kruger Health. Thank you for your support. Without you guys, it would be pretty hard to get this going. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, Jenny will be back next semester in the fall. Um, we'll be starting sometime in October. So look out for that. We have a bunch of fun classes um, for the next three weeks going on. And we are also having um, Strollo You Watch to Win. So look out for that. It's um, a little game that we're playing every week. You, uh, it's going to be a word scramble. So after each class, you get a letter. And at the end of the week, it turns into a word. And we have some great prizes. So look out for those posts on Facebook. And we will see you guys tomorrow. For We have gentle yoga at 12 p.m with Bonnie, so tune in. And then we have a special guest for uh, Quick Bites, Miss Annette, who is with us today. So come and join us. And that will be at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So thank you, guys. <laughs> I hope everyone had fun, and we will see you next time. Thank you. <laughs> Good job, Jenny. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Sis. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, guys. Bye. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.